Do you know how big companies like Google or Netflix run thousands of applications without getting any downtime? If you don't know, then the answer is Kubernetes. Hi everyone, this is Kubernetes architecture video. If you will watch this video for 5 minutes only, then I will guarantee you that you will understand whole Kubernetes architecture without any hassle. So stay with me and let's get started. Kubernetes developed by Google is an open source system that manages containerized applications. So the question is, what are containers? A container is like a package of an application with its dependencies as a portable unit. So you can run those containers in whatever machine. For example, a Python web application could be packaged by writing a Docker file. If that package is stored as a template, it is called an image. And if we run that image, it is called a container. Images are pushed to some remote registries like Docker Hub. So does Kubernetes deploy containers as it is? No, Kubernetes doesn't deploy containers as it is. It deploys in the form of pods. Pod is the smallest deployable unit inside the Kubernetes, which runs our application. It contains one or more containers. For example, a web application pod could run two containers, one Nginx for serving static assets like images and one backend container, which will be serving as a business logic that could be made of Node.js, Python or PHP application. Kubernetes handles application lifecycle, like creation of the application, updation of the application or deletion of the application. Kubernetes handles networking. Imagine you have to connect two different applications between two different machines. How will you manage DNS? How will you whitelist the IPs? It will be very tedious for you to deploy to two machines only. What about thousands of ports? What about thousands of containers? How will you do that? Kubernetes does that thing automatically. Kubernetes can scale applications to the millions of users without affecting the performance. Now let's talk about the components of Kubernetes. Kubernetes has two core components, control plane and the data plane. Both control plane and the data plane run a number of machines called nodes. The control plane nodes are called master nodes and the data plane nodes are called worker nodes. You can think of control plane as the brain of Kubernetes, managing all the cluster, taking all the decisions. The whole workflow of the Kubernetes is we push something to the control plane and the control plane makes the decision to deploy on the data plane. So the data plane is responsible for hosting your application and control plane is used for managing your application. Control plane includes an API server which acts as a main entry point or door of the cluster. Every communication passes through the API server which is exposed through the REST API. The controller manager watches the state of the cluster and always sync actual state to the desired state. Like if I desire Nginx replicas to be 5, so it is the responsibility of the controller manager to make the Nginx replicas as 5. The scheduler deploys the pods inside the nodes. Some nodes might not be available due to high CPU and memory, so it is the responsibility of scheduler to deploy to other available nodes. HCD is a database of Kubernetes. It stores every configuration and the state of the cluster. Now let's see what the data plane components are. Each worker node has a running process called kubelet which is responsible for pulling the images from the remote container registries. It also registers new nodes to the cluster. It ensures that pods inside the containers are running as expected. Container runtime runs the containers present inside the pod. The default container runtime of the Kubernetes is container D. Kubeproxy maintains the networking rules inside each node which is used for handling service to pod communication. Service is like a load balancer which takes the traffic from outside and sends the traffic to its underlying pod. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.